All right. So I'm going to say that number one is the parabola. Because only one variable is squared. Okay? Number two is the hyperbola. Why does the hyperbola stand out after that more than the circle and ellipse? What does the hyperbola have, which is this one, that the others don't have? Subtraction. It's subtraction. What that means when you have a hyperbola is when you look at the squared variables, when you look at the squared variables, one will be what? Positive and one will be what? Negative. So that's what you're looking for. Now, when you compare three, the ellipse, to the circle. Shape-wise, how are they different? Ellipse is an oval. Circle is, for lack of a better word, circular. This distance, this distance, this distance, and this distance are exactly the same. However, these distances are different. Well, what we're going to learn today is coefficient of the squared variables are different. But for a circle, the coefficients of the squared is going to be the what? Same. The coefficient of the squared is going to be the same. That's how you distinguish them. That is the checklist I would go through when you face this situation next Friday. This will be the last question on your test. Identify which one is which. So, if we come here, right in the equation, which one? If we look at number one, if we look at number one, is there only one square? Yeah. That's got to be a what? Parabola. Parabola, good. All right. So now I go to work. 2y squared plus 24y. 2y squared plus 24y plus x plus 70 equals 0. Does that make sense first off? What's the coefficient of the y squared? 2. So that's what I'm pulling out. What's half of 12? 6. 6 squared. What am I then going to subtract outside? It's not 36. 36 times what? Two. I'm going to factor. I'm going to have 2 times y plus 6 squared equals negative x plus 2. That is because 70 minus 72 is negative 2. And when I bring it to the other side, it's plus 2. What's my coefficient of the y? 2. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2. I'm going to pull the negative out. Make sense so far? All right. What's my vertex based upon what I have? Negative. Two, negative, six. What part is squared? The Y. So it's going to go left or right. right. However, it is what? Negative. negative. Oops, got in the wrong spot. Don't 
Don't worry about the plus sign. It's just asking you to graph. Okay? But the foci would be negative one-eighth away, going to the left. Good? Number two, are they both squared? Yes. Do they have the same coefficient? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, that is our friend, the circle. X squared minus 6X plus 9. Everybody okay with that? Half of 6 is 3. 3 squared is 9. Plus Y squared minus 4Y plus 4 equals 3 plus 9 plus 4. So I grouped them together, completed the square, added the same numbers on both sides. That's going to factor into what? X minus 3 squared plus Y minus 2 squared equals 16. What is the opposite of negative 3? 3. Opposite of negative 2? Two? 2. So that's my center. R squared is 16, so my radius is 4. When drawing circles... My suggestion would be you do the horizontal and vertical radii or diameters depending upon your perspective. And then just try to connect as best you can. Boom, chakra. Good so far. All right. Number three. Everybody's got that? Need it? Going once, going twice. So we'll do the little lady with the purple hat. Number three. One's positive and one's negative. That, my friends, is a hyperbola. I'm going to put the positive one first because I'm a positive kind of guy. 4y squared plus 8y. Minus 9x squared plus 36x. Everybody good with that? The signs of everything. Equals 68. So with a hyperbola, when you, when you group it together, make sure you switch your sign. Make sense? All right. What's the coefficient of y squared? Four. So I'm pulling it out. y squared with plus 2y plus 1 when I complete the square. Minus 9x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals... 68 plus what? 4 minus what? 36. Good. When I put these together, I got 36. But I need that to be 1. So what am I going to divide both sides by? 36. That's going to give me y plus 1 squared over 9. Minus x plus 2 squared over 4 equals 1. Even though the x comes second, remember the vertex, it comes first. So what's the opposite of positive 2? Negative 2, opposite of positive 1. Negative 1. So my center, for lack of a better word, is negative 2, 1. The y comes first. We have a denominator of 9. What's the square root of 9? 3. So I'm going up 3 and down 3. 
My second fraction is 4. It has a denominator of 4. What's the square root of 4? 2. So I'm going over 2. And I'm making my rectangle. I'm then creating my diagonal. Remember, those are my vertices, which means my curves are going to be above and below. Well, I've done everything except the what? Ellipse. So what does number four have to be by the process of elimination? Ellipse. Sixteen x squared plus ninety six x plus nine y squared plus fifty four y equals negative eighty one. What's my coefficient of x squared? 16, so that's what I'm pulling out. 16x squared plus 6x plus 9. What's my coefficient of y squared? 9, so that's what I'm pulling out. y squared plus 6y plus 9 equals negative 81 plus 81 plus 144. What's the negative 1 plus 81 going to do to each other? Cancel out, giving you 144. So what are you going to divide both sides by? 144. That's going to give me x plus 3 squared over 9 plus y plus 3 squared over 16 equals 1. That puts my center at the opposite of plus 3 for both, which would be negative 3. Negative 3. Those are my vertices, and 16 is bigger. What's the square root of 16? So I'm going up 4, down 4. Square root of 9, 3. So I'm going over 3 in both directions and connecting to form an 11. Good.